I'll tell I'll tell you that I'll tell you a little bit about myself, which is I, I guess I guess I have a face people feel very comfortable saying stuff to. <laughs> Some of my face people just love be I, my whole life people just been like that shirt doesn't work. <laughs> have we met? I mean we don't have to talk if we don't want to talk. <laughs> I was walking, this literally happened on Thursday. I was walking down Hollywood Boulevard. If you ever get the chance, don't do it. It's a nightmare. And I was walking, and this guy was walking towards me. He was wearing a leather jacket. And then as he got closer, the leather jacket kind of came open, and he was just wearing a bikini. I'm not done. He had purple hair, which I don't think was natural. He, he was bleeding from his right knee pretty profusely. And out of everyone on Hollywood Boulevard, he just looked right at me and goes, what are you looking at? And I was like, so many things. I mean, I don't know what I did. I had something about my face. It's why, I will tell you guys this, I don't uh, pick on anybody in the crowd. I don't make fun of anyone. You guys are all safe. You all can relax. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't do it at all. I get it. Uh, truly, because, yeah, no, because I, I, I love comedy. It's my favorite thing. And I, before I did it, I used to come to shows, and I would sit right where you guys were, in my face. <laughs> comics. <laughs> comics would just nail me. <laughs> They'd just be like, you sleeping with her? I'd be like, it's my mom. Don't do this, please. <laughs> nah. <laughs> oh, I totally get it. Like, I, I was in New York a couple months ago, and somebody called me a beta male. It's like, right, I was just walking. Yeah, the guy was like, beta male. I was like... Thank you so much. <laughs> Does everybody know what that is? No. no? Yeah. Then I'll tell you. I, uh, <laughs> there's not that many of you in this surfboard place. I, I, I can't afford to lose any of you. If any of you don't get anything, please raise your hand. I will come back for you. We have to be a team here on these jokes. <laughs> uh, so there's two types of men in theory. There's okay. alpha males, which are like, uh. <laughs> and then there's beta males, which are like, <laughs> and that's what the man saw me as and it hurt my feelings and it's not true <laughs> I don't love that laugh I'll tell you alright <laughs> alright sober I'm a beta male but drunk I turn into an alpha female <laughs> he didn't know that about me <laughs> Like, if you come up to me after this show and you're like, you suck, and I'm sober, I'm like, well, let's talk about this. And let's try to come to a solution as a team. <laughs> but if I'm drunk, I'll be like, what'd you just say? Hold my stuff, Brad. And I'm going to take off my hand. I'm going to get loud and angry. And if at any point you physically touch me, I'll call the police immediately on you. <laughs> it's tough. People just say things to me. And then I guess... I guess something about me, people think I'm nervous a lot. I have like a nervous, <laughs> something about me, people just think I'm like nervous, it's particularly hawk people. They're just looking at me and they're like, don't be so nervous about me. I'm like, it's not you, it's life. <laughs> life makes me nervous, you have nothing to do. You don't know what I've been through in my life. Don't pull back, I piss the bed very late into the game. It's just a real, it's just a real thing about me. I don't anymore, ladies. Uh, <laughs> Situations under control. Don't even worry about it. Uh, but I did for a very long time, and I did for so long. This is true. I had to wear this thing when I went to bed, and it had two little clips that attached to my underwear. There was this box next to my head, and when the clips felt condensation, the box would go eh, to wake me up. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so you understand why I'm like a slightly nervous person. <laughs> You know, I might be a little high strung sometimes. <laughs> you want to know what it's like to have a noise in your life that when you hear it, it means that you're pissing yourself? Do you know that? <laughs> Do to you emotionally? And if the inventor of that product is in this surf shop tonight, uh, two things. One, good job, it did work. <laughs> Credit where credit's due. But two, look, man, you're making a product that every single time a kid hears a noise, it means that he's pissing himself. <laughs> That has to be a really unique noise. That can't sound like every buzzer in every apartment oh I'm gonna go into for the rest of my adult life. Oh my God. Yeah, this guy said, oh my God, three times as he realized how horrific it is. You know how often I'm at people's houses, I'm like, we should all go out and, eh, no, what, damn it. <laughs> Who's playing Operation? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's, I, Cause like, yeah, I'm not like a loud person. That's the thing. I'm like, I'm ranty, but that's about it. I get set off. <laughs> Does anyone else like that? Where like, you're not like, we are like ranty. We've like, is this relatable? We have like trigger topics at parties. <laughs> yeah, so you where you're just like you're just like carrots, like whatever makes you like <laughs> lose your. All right, do you want to know my big one right now? Uh, mattress commercials. <laughs> yeah, mattress commercials. Yeah, 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 I hate the local mattress commercial. You're not on board. I'm gonna walk you through it. I'm a ranty guy, and I'm gonna win you over on this argument. Get ready. If you haven't seen a mattress commercial recently, I'm gonna walk you all through it. It's gonna be owned by a dude. He's gonna have bad facial hair. He's gonna have a nickname. They love nicknames in the mattress world. Always like, Wacky Will, Crazy Carl. <laughs> and he's creepy immediately. <laughs> he's always like, I'm Crazy Carl and I wanna watch you sleep. <laughs> oh, no thank you. <laughs> and then uh, the next part, because they're all the exact same thing, the next part is they're gonna get into science. They love science in the mattress world. <laughs> love it. They're always like, now this mattress is gonna remember the way you sleep. It's gonna contour itself to the way you sleep. Never slept before. It's called memory foam. I'm at home watching this commercial on a couch that I found on the street and I can barely stay awake. Is it that hard to sleep? What is your product? And then he closes creepy. He's like, I'm crazy Carl, come on in. You'll never wake up. And I'm just like, ugh. Don't care for it. Because here's the thing. I watch a lot of sports. I'm a big sports fan. I don't know if anybody else here is a sports fan. Yeah, but if you are, then you know we watch a lot of commercials with the last people watching live TV. So I know commercials, or at least I know dude commercials. Every sports fan has watched the same dude commercial now our entire lives. Everyone's the exact same. Guy, girl. Girl looks at the guy. Ugh. Girl looks back at the guy. Ooh, wait a second. He uses Tide or whatever your product is. <laughs> That's how, I, how you sell, am I, am I dead on? And by the way, yeah, and I double know this because I'm an actor and I've been in those commercials. <laughs> You wanna know a real commercial I did? Um, it was a speed dating event, and there's a bunch of hot dudes sitting down. And uh, they're ringing the bell, and no hot girls are sitting down. And they're like, we're all the hot girls. <laughs> and then they all turn around, and all the hot girls are gathered around me. <laughs> and I have a box of Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> yeah. That was the entire commercial. And, and for the record, I paid my rent for a year off that commercial. It, worked, it ran forever. That's donuts. You want to sell anything to men, you sell sex. We all know the game, right? Except mattresses. The product we literally have sex on, and they never bring it up in the commercial. This should bother all of you so much more than it is right now. <laughs> Crazy Carl, what else do you do on a mattress? <laughs> Jump up and down with wine on it? No, Crazy Carl. <laughs> Think like a human. Oh, it's unreal. You want to know I make $2 million tomorrow? I make a commercial, airs during a baseball big game, and I come out and I'm like, uh, I'm like hey, I'm Dirty Danny, uh, or whatever, something like that. Something, I don't know, I mean, I thought out for like, <laughs> Dirty Danny or something. Uh, now listen, every other mattress place, they sell the best mattresses for sleeping. But my mattresses are the best for sex. Every guy at home's gonna be like, what did you say? What was that? <laughs> Oh my God. That's right, these mattresses remember the positions you most regularly have sex in. And will contour itself to those positions. It's called Fun Foam. Uh, I'm Dirty Danny, come on in, then come on us. Uh, all your money. There you go. Did I convince you? Yeah. That's all about me. <laughs> Spill out in the stand, stomp and clap their hands. They always understand. This isn't a gross joke. On a pure historical level, is there any industry more on it than the porn industry? 
Do you guys remember when the internet first started? And it was just like, we're all gonna learn. <laughs> <laughs> remember that early internet where it's like, hi, I'm the internet, we're all gonna learn, we're all gonna meet each other. <laughs> And then the porn industry was like, no, you're not. <laughs> well, you're going to learn all right. Let's make some money, boys. And they came in there, and he changed, they changed the game. You forget this, because it happened so seamlessly, because it just showed up, because the porn industry invented the pop-up ad. Do you remember the day porn found you online? <laughs> I remember the day for me. It was a big day for Danny, because I was just learning. I remember I was learning. <laughs> And I, was, and I was being a good boy, and I was asking Jeeves, and I was doing all, you know? <laughs> Remember him? Yeah, yeah. And I was doing all that, and all of a sudden, it was just like, boobs! And I was like, boo! <laughs> Do we not have to type stuff into this anymore? There's just no more thinking now what's happening. <laughs> invented the pop-up. Invented everything we have online. They invented video hubs. Um, then, they were, uh, then they were the first to use user-generated content in their favor. Uh, first to diversity casting. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever gives them the credit they deserve. On this <laughs> right now, Hollywood's in the middle of being like, we're doing it. 15 years ago, the porn industry was like, okay, we can't have two white leads in everything. What are we doing here? <laughs> Let's get this white guy out of here. Let's bring in 11 black men. <laughs> And let's make something for everyone. <laughs> and now Hollywood has the audacity to be like, Crazy Rich Asians, we're doing it. <laughs> That's the name of a porn from 10 years ago. <laughs> and now the big thing in porn is fetishes. Um, I don't know what you guys are into. Please don't tell me. <laughs> but I promise you, they got it. Like, has anybody here been brave enough and gone to the bottom of the list? <laughs> it is specific. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. It's like two guys and a girl on a Tuesday <laughs> with a Republican-controlled Senate. You're like, somebody needs that. <laughs> But with everything else I said, it's like, right, it's like porn industry does it first, entire internet follows. Right now, the entire internet's becoming a fetish site, right? Like everything you get, like ads, search results, it's all for you, which is dope until you realize that we get our news through the internet, which means we get our news through our fetishes. Like Huffington Post, Breitbart, that's not news. That's kink news. <laughs> that's news the way you like it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> the news is complex. It's very frustrating. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but you read that stuff on the daily, it's just like, Tonight on the news, <laughs> Trump's a bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm at home like, yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> Half the country's racist and stupid. I'm like, I freaking knew it! <laughs> <laughs> Porn industry's first to everything. <laughs> Sex industry's always so on it. And then, what's crazy, is they're so good at that, and then we still don't have sex robots. Does that keep you up at night? It just, I mean, is it just me? I think about it every day. I check Amazon and I just go, still, still. Not to marry, I'm not being creepy, but like, just to practice. You guys have never wanted to practice? Look in your hearts. Just, I don't know, like, before your first time, guys, you want to go on a couple practice runs before your first time? <laughs> Screw asking guys. Ladies, <laughs> you wouldn't have wanted guys to have a couple practice <laughs> runs <laughs> before their first time? Thank you. The first time a man ever attempts sex is just on another human. That is mean. I mean, that's how injuries happen. We have to stop this. My first time, don't pull back. My first time... <laughs> It was so fast. It was like six seconds. Like, that's a vine. Like, it was really, <laughs> RIP vine. Like, it was so quick. And the saddest, the saddest part was, was she didn't even know it was over. It was, I, she thought we were still in the beginning portion of the evening. She was like, take me. I was like, you been took. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> uh, and then she got mad, and she was like, what happened? 
And I was like, we don't have sex robots, so I don't know what you thought was gonna happen here tonight. I don't know what I'm doing. The only training I had before that day is, is sex ed in school. And it's not sex ed, let's stop calling it that. It, it's consequence ed. <laughs> Yeah, they teach you the consequences. At no time are they like, all right, kids, lesson five, choking. Now, <laughs> surprising amount of women. <laughs> You're gonna use your non-dominant hand for balance. And, uh, I think about how much time they spent on STDs. They spent so much time on STDs and then the lack of time that they spent on the clitoris. <laughs> yeah. For the said, oh yeah, it's so, four out of five women cannot reach orgasm unless that part of their body is stimulated. Four out of five, four out of five. Yeah, guess what? Half this room has no clue what I'm talking about right now. And that's a problem with the system. Don't look at your dude, it's not as, they threw it in there with the rest of the body parts. There's like uterus, clitoris, vaginal, well, anyway, let's talk about herpes. And you're just like, dude, one of those isn't the key to the entire thing, right? Circle that. <laughs> Sex is like a game of where's Waldo? And nobody teaches the guys what Waldo looks like, <laughs> or even that we're supposed to be looking for a Waldo. I mean, it's just like, it's chaos. We get that class, and then we get porn, which we've talked, but, no, it's, it's not the most realistic. And then, <laughs> I'm supposed to show up and blow your mind, like, what happened? It's like, you're unrealistic, shut up. If, you, if you'd never driven a car before, the only thing that happened beforehand was you watched Fast and the Furious movies. <laughs> <laughs> Took a class, like, these are headlights, those are brakes, and eh, both of equal importance. Chucked in the middle of the highway, you'd crash in six seconds. <laughs> Some of this barber shop is still not on board. The joke will continue <laughs> until I get what I deserve up here. Sharks, here's what I'm asking for. <laughs> look, all I'm saying is look, we, all right. we either get sex robots or we stick with the current system. But the current system for sex in this country sucks. Current system is that men are awful at it. At it. Out of the gates, relax. Until one girl is like, that's it, and she fixes it. <laughs> that's, how, that's, that's how most guys learn. That's how I learned. This one girl was just like, no, <laughs> not like that. <laughs> and I was like, I think two and a half women would disagree with you. <laughs> no, they didn't like it. Okay, then why did they orgasm? And she was like, what does it sound like when a woman orgasms, Danny? And I was like, well, they very calmly <laughs> and quietly go, I'm orgasming. <laughs> she was like, you're so stupid. You're the dumbest person. But then she just taught me. She taught me the things I should have learned in that class. It was gr There was lessons, there was games, there was singing. It was like, it was like a scene out of Mulan. She wanted to make a man out of you. And, so was, <laughs> and at one point, I remember I just touched this one part and out of nowhere she just goes, whoa! And I was like, Walto! <laughs> Girlfriend. Yeah, that's a good thing. She's a lot um she's a lot prettier than me. She's a problem. I don't know if anybody here dates somebody above their looks. Anybody here date somebody above their looks? Yeah. For the record, and I'm not gonna call people out, but I can see you guys. And I don't know. In theory in theory I thought it was gonna be a lot better. In theory, I thought I was gonna like walk in rooms with her and people are gonna be like, whoa. I thought Danny was a six. Turns out he was a nine the whole time. <laughs> That's not what happens. Uh, instead we walk in rooms together and everybody just goes, what? No. Ah. <laughs> Did Danny get rich? What's going on here? What is this? 
<laughs> we're like a walking abstract painting as a couple. Like, people see us together and they're like, what does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I've historically dated above my looks because girls see me do this, they get tricked into it. Be careful, it can happen to you. Uh, I was dating this one girl for a while and she was a model. That was her job. Very silly. But you know, <laughs> saw me do this. She had a she had a she had a birthmark right here, which was like her only physical imperfection. But when that beautiful little shit kills you, so it made her very sad. She'd be like, "I hate it," and I'd be like, "Okay." <laughs> when she was asleep, I would just look at that birthmark, just be like, "You're the reason I'm here." <laughs> <laughs> Keeping me in the game, birthmark. <laughs> that birthmark's the best wingman I've ever had. <laughs> right, Tyler, we did it for uh, we did it for three months. It's pretty good for me in a model. Three months, and then she was like, "No more." And I was like, "Why?" She was like, "Do you really want to know?" And I was like, "No, I'm good." <laughs> no, I'll go. I'll leave. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> sounds mean. Um, but then I was like. No, why? Because I want to be better for the next girl. I want to like keep improving and stuff. So you know, I can take a little feedback. So I was like, no, why? And she goes, well, to be honest, I never found you that attractive. Aww. I know. She said it right to my face. Yeah. She was like, I found only person, lovely personality, love who you are, and the damn, it's not that physically attractive to you. My friends lost their minds. My friends were like, kill her. She dies tonight. <laughs> we murdered this girl. <laughs> I was like, I love where you guys' hearts are. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. But then I'm like, I don't know. That girl never found me attractive. She had sex me for two months. That's the nicest person I've ever met. <laughs> My entire that's the definition of a team player. That's such a good person. She was so nervous to break up with me too. She's like, I'm so sorry. I was like, don't worry about it. You put in your time, get yourself out there. <laughs> you earned it, you know? I think I'm right about this too. I really I, man, I have had this stance forever. I do not understand why breakups are so nasty. Never have, never will. Breakups are so nasty in this country. Like, you have like a real breakup with people are like, oh, I hate her. Like, what? why? Yeah, you're like, you just did nice stuff for each other for a while. Now she doesn't want to anymore. That's legal. You know? I don't know if you can hate a person. If you have sex with me, I'm rooting for you for the rest of my life. <laughs> I promise everybody in this recording studio right now. Every last one of you. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, you're on Team Danny. I'm pulling for you. Why wouldn't I? You did that for free. And I did it for free back. I think that's a good relationship, honestly. If you went into Subway and there was a lady there, and every time you went in, she gave you a free sandwich for two months. And then one time in, she's like, dude, I just can't give you free sandwiches anymore. Would you be like, well, then I hope you choked to death on a big black sandwich. <laughs> Or would you just be thankful for sandwiches past, you know? <laughs> the other thing about dating above your looks, I'll tell you this, is guys just hit on my girlfriend right in front of me all the time, constantly. They, they, they see her, and then they see me, and then they're just like, no, I'm good. And those go right in <laughs> on my girlfriend, and they hit on her. And my friends, so far, my friends are always like, they're always like watching, I was like, what are you gonna do? I'm like, nothing. She's an adult. She knows how to take care of herself. She, she's, she's fine. She doesn't need me. I've never understood like the other, like the protected boyfriend. You know those guys? What are you doing? We, I went to a party. We went to a party. So it was a couple weeks ago. We went together. We split up immediately. We talk enough. I was, so I was rogue in the party, and I started talking um, to this girl. She's a very nice girl. And then we stopped talking. I started talking to this dude. All of a sudden, I feel this like, it wasn't a tap. It was a misdemeanor, and it hurt. <laughs> and I was like, sir, ow, what? And this guy goes verbatim, he goes, hey man, just so you know, that's my girl. So back off. And I was like, whoa, you see me as a threat? <laughs> Thank you so much. It is an honor to be nominated. <laughs> me, I'm just a damn. <laughs> If you're that guy, Jen, if you're the protective boyfriend, don't be that guy. It's the worst guy to be for two reasons. First off, you date her, you don't own her. But secondly, and more importantly to me, that's your strategy. That's your game plan for the relationship. Just her, here, you, here. <laughs> 20 years, you might date this person for 20 years and the only thing stopping her from cheating on you is no! 
for 20 years. You think you're that good at defense? You're not the Kempe Matumbo. You gotta mess up at some point. If all it takes for your girlfriend to cheat on you is me, she's already cheated on you. <laughs> Can't tell you how nice it is getting off the Kembe Matumbo reference. Can't tell you. Very proud of you, that those of you that got it. Does anybody here know the, um, the Who Wants to uh, Sex Matumbo story? Yeah. You do? It's the best story it's in sports. Story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, t I'll teach the rest of you. This is, I'll bring everybody in. But you can back me up that I'm not making this up. Um, all right, so first off, for most of you, the Kembe Matumbo, former basketball player from Africa, known for his defense. Now, yes. what makes him special? Rumor is, back in the day, the Kembe Matumbo used to walk into crowded bars. Bar would go silent, a seven foot monster has walked in the room, <laughs> and he would just loudly go, Who wants to sex Matumbo? <laughs> and then, inevitably, some young lady would be like, me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I wanna. And they would go off and they would sex Matumbo. <laughs> and as a kid, I was like, well, that's the dream. I mean, <laughs> oh, that's everything I wanna grow up to be. I'm just, just a Jew in Virginia at the time, you know? <laughs> but that said, that said, I feel the energy in this room. We live in a period right now, I think it's a very good period personally, where we're looking back at a lot of our heroes and we're being like, is that a good person? Is that, the, you know, is that like the sort of person we should be looking up to? And looking back on it, it's like, way to get consent to Kempe. <laughs> <laughs> Asking the question in a crowded bar, putting no pressure on the female, with witnesses, that's light years ahead of his time. Unbelievable. <laughs> Allegations not in his house. No, sir. It's a good man. That's love. Do I have anything else to say? They will come when the clamor on for interviews. When we were young and the bootleg are on. This is a weird time. <laughs> Technology is so crazy right now. Facebook, I mean, I don't even know what's going on on Facebook. I don't know about you guys. I don't know if your friends are like mine on Facebook, but I, my friends are so confident on that thing. I wish I believed in anything in my life as much as my friends believe in their status updates. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't know anything. I just see statuses all day, just like, I'll tell you how to fix the economy. <laughs> and I'm at home just like, Sam? <laughs> Sam does that to fix the economy? <laughs> Didn't Sam vomit in an Uber like two months ago? I mean, what a turnaround for Sam. It's unbelievable. Because to me, and I don't know about to you guys, but to me, Facebook has become this like, if this makes sense, a vacuum of support. You know what I mean? Like life updates, like kill me on the life update status. You know what I'm talking about? Like the life update status where it's like, woke up this morning. <laughs> That's nothing, you did nothing. <laughs> but every single comment on Facebook is just like some version of, yes, 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 and nothing else because my, my friends have unfriended everybody who would say otherwise, so. It's a Truman Show. It's a Truman Show. I saw a girl post a status. This was this was last year, but she posted a status and she goes, uh, she goes, I just got fired from my third job this year. <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> Why can't I catch a break? And all of her friends were like, Yeah, <laughs> Stephanie, you're gorgeous. They don't even. At home, like, so nobody's gonna have an honest conversation <laughs> with Stephanie about the situation here. <laughs> Three jobs in a year? A year? Three? Uh, uh, that's a check engine light. <laughs> it has to be, right? Like, <laughs> check engine light goes on in your car, you take it to a mechanic. I mean, I don't know, you do something. 
You don't just call your friend from high school you haven't spoken to in like 10 years and you're like, oh, the car's fine, right? He's like, yeah! <laughs> Like, people used to have shame. I miss shame. Not a lot, a lot's bad, for sure. But just a little, kind of good for you. Like, you used to talk to people, and they were just like, I'm trying to work on myself. I'm trying to get better. Dude, I know, I know, I'm trying. <laughs> now you talk to people, and they're just like, if you can't handle me at my worst, <laughs> you don't deserve me at my, you have an alcohol problem. This isn't my <laughs> issue. <laughs> What are we doing on that site? But then, <laughs> but then I get scared because I'm like, well, what if like, technology moves fast, man. Technology moves real fast. And it's like, what if I'm just getting older? And I just, you ever have that moment where you're like, what if I just don't get it anymore? I have that, like, I don't know. I just, I went home, f I just saw my grandpa. I went home for a uh, Passover, uh, which is a Jewish holiday. And, uh, <laughs> And I saw my grandpa, and he was describing what life was like when he was like a kid. You don't realize how fast technology moves until your grandpa describes what life was like when he was a kid. I don't know if anybody know my, knows my grandpa in here, but <laughs> he will take you there, man. He was just telling us, he was just like, when we were kids, we used to hit each other in the face with sticks. <laughs> what? Yeah, stick face. <laughs> you kids don't play stick face no more? <laughs> What are you talking about? He's like, ah, it was the age of Sinatra. We all had syphilis. And he goes, like, walking out of the room. <laughs> and my cousins, the sad part was, like, he goes walking out. My cousins are all just, like, laughing at him. They're like, eh, Grandpa. But I just, like, I don't know, it's just in there. And I was like, that's a smart man. That's just how fast technology moves. Like, someday, if you want to have a nightmare right now, someday we're going to have to describe what life is like right now to our grandkids. How are we gonna explain any of this to them? <laughs> How are we gonna explain, Uber? How are we gonna explain Uber to our grandkids? We're gonna have self-driving cars in what? 10 years, give or take, right? We're about 50 years now down the road and I just have a group of grandkids looking up at me just like, wait, grandpa, what would happen when you were drunk? <laughs> and, and then I don't have to be like, well, I would pull out my phone and I would push a button, and then a man in between jobs would just show up. <laughs> and I would just hop in that stranger's car. <laughs> what, what, was there any training for this man? No training, no training at all. <laughs> All we knew was he had a Honda Sonata and failed dreams. Outside of that, <laughs> think about it. <laughs> Grandpa, that's insane. That has to be the most dangerous thing that was on the roads. Well, there were buses. What's a bus? <laughs> All right. All right. All right, kids, you ready? You're gonna take the car, you're gonna blow it up real big, all right? Now, you know all the safety things we have, like seat belts and airbags? Throw them out the window. <laughs> some people, some people wouldn't even have seats. They would be just standing, clutching a pole while this thing was going 60. We would hollow this thing out and shove as many people with DUIs in there as we could. <laughs> Grandpa, that's insane. That has to be the most dangerous thing that was on the road. Well, there were motorcycles. What's a motorcycle? <laughs> Bus, back to the car. You're gonna cut a slice off the car. You're gonna put a man on top. He is a tattoo. Now, <laughs> now, He's swerving in and out of the traffic. If you touch him, he's dead immediately. No chance of survival. Now, wait, wait. We made him wear helmets so we could identify them after the crash. <laughs> Grandpa. 
Grandpa, <laughs> that's insane. That has to be the most dangerous thing out there. Well, there were bicycles. What the hell is a bicycle? <laughs> Language. Okay. <laughs> Bus, car, motorcycle. You're going to cut a slice off the motorcycle. <laughs> You're going to put a man on top. He is a tattoo, but it's ironic. <laughs> <laughs> Now, he's going a tenth the speed of everything else, obeys none of the other rules of the road. He can go any direction at any moment. There are no rules for this man. And if you get anywhere near him, he's going to look at you like you're the lunatic. And he isn't a psychopath for thinking this is okay. And then, Grandpa, why? It was the age of Cardi B and we all had herpes. <laughs> Technology moves fast. <laughs> it's scary. I don't know. <laughs> you have to hang out with people different than yourself. I really believe in this because, like, I I also believe in ghosts. Which is like a big, you know, again in Hollywood. You can't, you can't say you like ghosts. <laughs> I, and, I, and like, I don't think they're everywhere. I just think it's like funny that you could like die and go to heaven and say, like, nah, I want to stay down here and knock over pots. I think it's silly. <laughs> it makes me laugh at night. But again, if I'm, if I'm at a Hollywood party and, they, and I'm like, oh, I think there's ghosts, I'll just... I'll just hear, actually, the call of the atheist, and I'll just like feel a fedora just come in my way <laughs> to say just this day, just like, oh, you're dead, you're dead. You die, you're dead, you're dead. It's just like, do you, what, what is, did I, why are you talking to me? Do I have to know my grandfather is decaying in the ground? <laughs> if I picture him up on a cloud looking down on me, just like jerking off again, is it really <laughs> your day? Why are you involved? <laughs> And, and they always say the same thing to me, because I, I will engage with atheists, because, like, and, and they always say the same thing to me, which is like, look, it's just that the Bible is stupid, and science is right. Science is always right. And I'm like, all right, I'll play your game. Science is always right. But scientists, wrong a lot. Wrong most of the time. You ever read a science textbook from like five years ago? It's a nightmare. <laughs> it's all wrong. And you forget this because there is, scientists are so cocky. There is nobody on earth more cocky than a scientist who just thinks they discovered some stuff. You know what I mean? Because they make the big stage and there's like laser lights, like Neil deGrasse Tyson does like the moonwalk <laughs> in front. Bill Nye's like, <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden they come out and they're like, what's up, we're science, all right. <laughs> all right, guys, listen up. This pill gonna fix all your stuff. Ah, how good are we? Bread's good for you, Pluto's a planet, we're at it. <laughs> <laughs> And they're like, yeah. And you forget when they show up like two years later and they're like, oh no. <laughs> Are you still taking that pill? <laughs> Do not take that pill anymore. <laughs> if we knew then what we know now. <laughs> we, 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 we forgot about the liver and it's on us. So I don't know. I, I guess I just get to this place where I'm like, look, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that like, I, I know what it was there. I just think that people who believe in God, as long as like they're not forcing their, their beliefs onto you, I don't see why you gotta get into their, their stuff, you know? Leave people alone. Now with that said, is the Bible wonky at some parts? Sure. Sure, got some real wonky parts. <laughs> but it's old. Nobody ever talks about this. It is so old. 2,000 years old, give or take your thing. That's a very old book. If you read a science textbook from 2,000 years ago, you want to be like, this is awesome. <laughs> be like, we just know gay people. Science, you're drunk. <laughs> I'm, just say, I, I just, I'm just saying, if there is a God, if there is a God, if there's a God, and he comes down right now onto this stage in this art gallery, you just don't think he's like immediately just like, oh no, are you still reading that book? <laughs> Do not read that book anymore. If 
we knew then. <laughs> I don't know. You have to hang out with like, I, I, you have to hang out with people different than yourself. Like I, I, uh, I got roasted a couple weeks ago. That's a very good experience to get roasted. I never had it happen before. Do you guys know what being roasted is? White people, specifically, I'm looking at. I know you know, but like, but it's like, <laughs> I can tell you, I, I know what you're talking about, but you guys might not be, if you've never been roasted before, so what happens is, you have a group of black friends, and, <laughs> and they're, they're gonna be like, we should all go get dinner, and you're like, okay, and then they make fun of you for about five hours straight. And it's the best night of their entire life if it's about me. These, these guys, I mean, they're, and first off, there's no warning. There's no like, there's, it wasn't like a planned event. It was just like, all of a sudden, this one guy was just like, hey, you look like a dad. You look like a dad, man. You look like a deadbeat dad. <laughs> he called me Human New Balance. <laughs> Real thing he said. <laughs> it's a raucous laughter. I mean, everyone laughed so hard. I was wearing, <laughs> I was wearing these sneakers, and he goes, uh, he goes, oh, what are those shoes? Nikes? I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, what are those? The Tim Allens? I was like, oh, what's happening here? <laughs> you ever get roasted so hard where you try to join in on your own roast, where you're like, what about my hair? What's going on over here? Because <laughs> um, if you've never been roasted before, for you guys, but uh, if you've never been roasted before, so to, to paint a picture for you, so there's the roaster. That's him, so he's like, you ugly. And then, <laughs> and then there's the roasty, so that was me. So I was like, help. And then, <laughs> and then there's a group that forms around you. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna sound like they're gonna repeat his joke, but they will actually make a new joke. Very tricky, you don't see it coming. So he'd be like, <laughs> Be like, man, you look like Ray Romano. <laughs> and then everybody behind him to go, oh, snap, he does look like Javier Bardem. It's like, well, that's not what he said. <laughs> it's a different joke. <laughs> I'm glad we're able to talk about this. <laughs> it, can, it can be hard to talk about race sometimes because I think I, I, some of my friends, some of my white friends are just so intense about it. Like they get real weird. I, just, I had a friend recently, and he just goes, uh, he goes, I don't even see race. Do I even see it? I was just like, I think you do. <laughs> That's way weirder to me. Like, is there anything more uncomfortable in our society right now than when a white person is trying to describe their black friend? And then they just like have a panic attack, like like a 30 seconds of description. Do you know what I'm talking about? Where a guy's like, did you meet Tim at the party? Like, no, what did Tim look like? He's like, <gasps> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Oh. He was wearing a hat. I got a hat. He had eyes. He, had eyes. he was black. I'm so sorry. I was like, dude, it's okay. To me, like, yeah, I definitely see race. And if anything, I take note of if I'm not like hanging out with a certain type of person because I'm like, oh, I want that kind of those, that that kind of person in my life. Like, you should be hanging out with people different than yourself. But to say you don't see it, that's such like bullshit to me like I, I, like I, I see it. like I'll, I'll give you an example alright so I play pickup basketball most Saturdays not very good play with a lot of heart and, <laughs> and uh, but usually when I show up it's like a very like eclectic uh, group of dudes playing every now and then I'll show up and they'll only be black dudes playing when that's true I go home. <laughs> That's respectful racism. That's considerate racism. That's not me being like, I don't play with black people. That's me being like, well, I don't want to ruin their day. <laughs> you know? You think I should join that game? <laughs> I join that game, there's a black dude watching, he's gonna be like, wow, that guy truly doesn't see race. What a hero. <laughs> No, he's gonna be like, that Jew needs to go play in another game. <laughs> then everybody behind him is gonna be like, oh, snap! Al Pacino does need to go play at the JCC. Gotta hang out different people, I think. It's important. It's important to do that. This might turn you guys against me. I like professional wrestling. Yeah, oh, that'll get you murdered at a Hollywood party. 
<laughs> you ever say at a Hollywood party? If I'm at a Hollywood party, I'm like, oh, I like professional wrestling. I'll say it, and then I'll just feel a fedora. Just come, <laughs> come in my way to scold me, say the same stuff they always say to us, which is? It's fake. Exactly. It's fake every single time. <laughs> I mean, I'll talk with somebody for two hours about politics, the economy. Then I mention I like professional wrestling. They'll be like, uh, Danny, are you aware? <laughs> professional wrestling is fake. Yeah. Yeah, I know that man is not actually an undertaker. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, but you know what? I was watching TV recently and I noticed something. Do you know what else is fake on TV? Everything else, just shut up. <laughs> oh, it's ridiculous. Professional wrestling's fake. I'm gonna go home and watch The Bachelor. It's beautiful. No, it's not. There's a producer off camera feeding those people drugs. We're all watching lies. <laughs> the only reason people say that stuff to us, I think about this a lot. The only reason they say that stuff to us is because our guys are so good at their jobs, you guys aren't sure. <laughs> Best actors on TV, hands down, it's not close. My girlfriend and I uh, watch Ballers together. Shut up. And <laughs> it's a good show. Sorry, like a normal thing. And it stars The Rock. Yeah, and my girlfriend and I were watching, and she was like, wow, The Rock is a really good actor. Who would have thought? And I was like, huh, me. <laughs> Literally, anyone who's ever watched professional wrestling before, are you kidding me? You think acting is hard for The Rock. Do you guys have any clue what The Rock used to do? Back me up, wrestling fans. On a nightly basis, they perform nightly. On a nightly basis, The Rock used to strip down to his underwear. All right, and he's bathed in oil, glistening. <laughs> yeah, those of, you, those of you not laughing, look at the people who are laughing, those are visual learners. And <laughs> hop on board, he's glistening. And those of you that just met The Rock as a movie star, you know him as a very big rock, but wrestling fans can back me up. In the day, much smaller. Much smaller rock, much tighter rock. <laughs> he's a tight rock, yeah. Dare I say a diamond? He was beautiful. <laughs> That's a science joke that'll only get half of you. I knew that going into it. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> He'd walk out to a ring. There'd be another guy there. Who's that guy? It doesn't matter who that guy is. That guy would punch him in the face. I think for real, I don't know how they do it. They run around for about an hour. It's exhausting. At one point, he's going to go through a table. Has to hurt. After all that, he would pin the other guy. And then The Rock would just pick up a microphone and do a 30-minute improvised monologue about the other guy's mom. <laughs> Suck on that, Meryl Streep. <laughs> Saying your pre-written lines, you studied the night. But he's off the cuff in it on live TV after being hit with a chair. And then my girlfriend's like, wow, The Rock's a good actor. Who would have thought The Rock is so good? It's like, babe, you keep calling him The Rock. His name is Dwayne. <laughs> that is his character's name. Who is that iconic in their first role that you call them that for the rest of their life? except The Rock and Mr. Bean. That's acting. Oh. We get in fights about so much stuff. Uh, it's mostly TV related, I guess, because I have these stupid opinions. We got in a fight over Beauty and the Beast once. That was a good one. You want to hear about the Beauty and the Beast fight? Yeah. All right. There's a part, there's a part in Beauty and the Beast where the Beast is like, I want to get her a gift. That's how he says it. And then, <laughs> if you've seen the movie, he brings her into this library. And he's like, it's yours. And Belle is like, <laughs> <laughs> And my girlfriend is like, <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, that's a terrible gift. And then she was like, you don't know what love is. And the fight began. But, <laughs> <laughs> and off we were to the races on the fight. But the thing is, I stand by my point. That's a terrible gift. Terrible. He didn't buy her a library or make her a library. He opened the door to his already existing library and just let her borrow his books. You know, like how a library works. 
That is great. If you were dating me and I was like, hey, it's your birthday and I know you love Xbox. Well, now you can play my Xbox. <laughs> You'd be like, you don't know what gifting is. I don't know if that's a bad opinion. I think it's right. You want to know my most, un you want to know my most unpopular opinion? And it just happens. We just had Fourth of July, and I'm so glad it's over because it's a tough time of year for me. I hate fireworks. Yeah, feel the energy in this room. I mean, literally, a guy over there went. Pfft. I mean, I made you laugh for like ten minutes now, and you guys just turned on me that quickly. Yeah, I hate fireworks. You all heard me. Hey. Oh yeah, okay. Remember the last new firework you saw? I'll save you some time. You've never seen a new firework. <laughs> Same show every year. And every year, you all act impressed. Every 4th of July, just happened, all my friends running around being like, Danny, did you see the finale? <laughs> huh. Danny, how good was the finale this year? Did you see the finale? Uh, you mean when the guy just lit more of them? Is... He just lit stuff a little bit faster? Is that the part you're talking about? <laughs> nothing. They've invented nothing. Think about it, your life in a span of 20 years. Think about it, everything in your life has improved. Literally everything. Except fireworks. <laughs> just, pff, that's it. That's all they have. They might have added a box a couple years ago, debatably. It's insane. If you asked me when I was 11 years old, hey, Danny, what are fireworks gonna be like in 20 years? I'd be like, I'll tell you, man. Fourth of July, 2021? You wanna know? A fireworks gonna go up in the sky. It's gonna spell out the word America. Okay. <laughs> Boom, Britney Spears. She's gonna do a little dance underneath it. <laughs> Boom, Michael Jackson, he's gonna do the moonwalk on top of the word America. We didn't know. Don't pull back on me. I didn't know when I was 11 what I know now. So, <laughs> if I could go back, he wouldn't be in the show, but he's in the show. Boom, Transformer. Boom, Pikachu. Thank you. Sometimes, sometimes people get mad at that part. They're like, Pikachu is an American, he's Japanese. I'm like, yeah, we've adopted him. That's what this country's all about. <laughs> Go in the fireworks show. Boom, giant eraser goes flying back and forth across the sky, erasing the sky, clear sky. <laughs> Again, those of you not laughing, look at the people who are laughing. Those are the visual learners. You gotta see it. Picture it, clear sky. <laughs> Boom, Abraham Lincoln's face. Boom, George Washington's face. Boom, Native American. But a little bit smaller. Only because, <laughs> only because we want to acknowledge it, but like we don't want to draw too much attention to it. <laughs> We've had some oopsie doodles as a country. <laughs> Boom, giant square with two little pegs like an Etch-a-Sketch shakes itself. Clear sky. <laughs> now you're into it, you see? You ready for the finale? All right. We make a giant flag in the sky, okay? And the stars are spinning, the waves are waving. <laughs> Boom, Porky Pig, he pops his head out through the middle. He goes, widow, widow, that's right, fireworks talk in this world. Let's, let's dream a little, can we dream? He goes, he goes, a widow, widow, boom, his head explodes. Blood, guts, brains, everywhere. He falls, he falls out, Uncle Sam pops his head out with a shotgun. He goes, that's never all, this is America 2021, YOLO. Boom. <laughs> Boom, Aretha Franklin, she starts singing God Bless America. Boom, Michael Jordan on top of a horse, Sea Biscuit. Boom, Muhammad Ali on top of a dolphin, Flipper. They high five in the middle of the sky, giant explosion, Honey Boo Boo with wings goes flying over all of our heads. Boom, Morgan Freeman dressed as a janitor, representing God, would take a mop and mop up the whole sky, clear sky, that would be my show. I mean, it's unpopular, but I think it makes sense, you know? <laughs> I don't know. It's exciting. <laughs> you guys get quiet quick. Uh, <laughs> oh.
Thank you very much.